Hey, Brother Sewing and Crafting family, Angela Wolf here, and it is our Thursday show. It's very nice to see you. All right, so we are live streaming on YouTube and Facebook. I can see all your comments, but the title was a little misleading. <laughs> I've been working on some projects here that I cannot share with you yet, so I can't use the Art Spirit app today, but I will walk you through ideas of how to do it. The main thing we're doing is refashioning a t-shirt into a racerback tank. You can wear it as a bathing suit cover up, a workout top, but I wanna add embroidery and I wanna do it from Art Spirit. So I'll walk you through the steps and then we'll go to the machine and I'll give you tips for embroidering on knit. So that's the show today. And then in a couple weeks, I can show you the rest. <laughs> All right, so say hi, say where you're from. Sorry about the little delay. There's been, we had a really bad storm yesterday and it must have just like I don't know, screwed up my internet for a little while, but I'm here and it's so nice to see you all. And I see you rolling in. Uh, happy summer, by the way. Hope you're all staying nice and cool. So I think we're here. I just want to make sure since uh, I'm the only one on here, can you hear me okay? Hey, Esther. Hey, Stephanie, I'll still give you tips for using Art Spira. I'm just not sending it to my machine. So that's the only difference. Mary Lou, great to see you. Hey, did we have a fun show yesterday or what? This whole week has been a lot of fun shows. So if you missed it, I think on Tuesday, Nephi was making the cutest tote bag and we had pre-recorded that. So I missed seeing your comments, but that was out of organza. If you missed that, go back on Brother So's YouTube page. It was so cute. I was wondering how is this bag gonna stand up with no stabilizer? It was like magic. It looked great. <laughs> All right, so I've got two t-shirts on the table for you. Good morning, good morning. Oh, good, Esther. <laughs> so here we go. I have two t-shirts and I'm going to embroider on one just to keep for the time being. So I'm actually going to end up with two t-shirts here. And the other one, we're going to turn into a racer back t-shirt. Yeah, it has been a great week, hasn't it, Mary Lou? <laughs> okay, so the supplies you're going to need is a t-shirt, just one t-shirt. You need Okay, I don't even know how you can get this at the store because I always buy by the yard. But you're going to need a knit fabric to use as a binding. There isn't enough on the t-shirt to use a binding to create that for the racer back. So you're going to need that. And you'll need scissors, your airflow serger, of course, your brother airflow serger. If you don't have that, a brother serger will work, a brother sewing machine will work. But the main thing is to cut it up and make it look nice, but we want to embellish it. So those of you that love crafting with the Art Spear app, I found some of the cutest things on there that you could use with like heat transfer vinyl, or I'm going to use embroidery. All right, so let's get started. And I can see all your comments and questions, so keep them rolling in. Uh, do bra straps show on the racer back? Hey, Amanda. Well, it depends. <laughs> it depends how narrow you make that racer back. So I don't know, a lot of the bras I've seen lately have a little clip in the back, so you can just clip it together. So your straps go like this. You might wanna check yours. In fact, I have them on almost every one I have, and I didn't even know it until recently. So uh, now also, if you wanna be cautious of that, I'll give you some tips while I cut this t-shirt up. That was a great question though. Okay. So I have two here. One I'm going to embroider on to show you what it looks like. The other, uh, I'm just gonna cut up. I have some extra fabric here, of course, in a contrasting color, but I just happen to have yellow here. Imagine that, right? If you all been following me for a little while, you know that this has become my favorite piece of knit fabric ever. And I find more and more uses of it. So the first thing you need to do is take your knit fabric I'm trying to find the salvages here because this is a little bit cut up. So here's my salvage. Fold your fabric salvage to salvage. It looks like mine got a little dirty, but it won't matter. I'll throw this in the wash when I'm finished. This is probably why I ended up with this piece because it was the first yard off the bolt, meaning that's probably like uh, shipping, <laughs> shipping marks. So I have salvage to salvage down here, which you can see. And I know you won't be able to see the whole thing while I'm cutting, so just trust me. You need to cut two strips 
two inches or two and a half inches wide. I'm just gonna cut two and a half inches because I have my ruler right here. Let's find my rotary cutter. It's so awkward to cut backwards, but for you to see, I have to do that. Usually I hold the rotary cutter like this, just FYI. Slide this down a little bit because this fabric is about 58 inches wide. Almost 60, really. Slide a little bit more. I just want to cut the whole strip because then I'll have two strips. It'll be long enough to finish the, the shirt. Did you make the t-shirt we made last week? It was on the camera right behind me there. So here's my two strips. I'll double check that this is long enough before I get rid of the fabric, but that should be plenty. So let's start with the white top. So for a racer back style, ideally you'll want to cut up into the shoulder a little bit and then go down. Now, are you wearing this as a bathing suit cover up or are you wearing it more for um, like a tank top? If you're wearing it with maybe a sports bra underneath or for a bathing suit, you'll want to cut it lower on the sides, which is what I'm going to do. I, this is not going to be an official tank top. And also, depending on the size t-shirt you're using, if you take in the back, go in and go a little bit lower, then you can wear a top underneath. So Amanda, that would solve the whole bra problem there anyways. I usually, like if I'm going to wear this to the gym, which is what I'm planning, I would have a sports bra on underneath. So we'll start cutting the top. This is the front side. And wherever you start on the shoulder on one side, you're going to want to do on the other. I could also fold it in half to make sure they're even. So I'll start with this side. Here's the front. I'm cutting in about an inch from the shoulder. Now, I don't know what size top you have, but you want to make sure that this is a little narrower because once we add another binding, which is going to be yellow on this side, I want it to look nice. I could also cut this entire neckline out and add yellow, or I can add yellow behind it. I haven't decided yet. I just know that I'm going to use yellow. I also chose yellow because I wanted to use a contrasting color so you could see. So for the front, you want to follow this arm's eye right here. You don't want the front to go in and out. That might be a little awkward. So I'm just going to follow this right to the underarm seam. So here's the sleeve. I'm just below that. So that's the front. That looks pretty nice. If this is a little jagged, I'll make sure I cut this so it's nice and straight or a nice curve. But also, once it goes through the serger, it'll trim the edges anyways. All right, let's see what the back looks like. Now, here's the racer pack, the racer back. Now, follow my scissors. I'm only cutting the back side. First thing I'm gonna do is just cut off the sleeve. This is almost what we did with the last, the last top. And I wanna make sure that the arm, under arm holes match right here. So I don't wanna cut this way down and find out I have to cut the, the front too. Whatever you do to the front down here on the side seams, you have to do to the back. So this angles in a little bit. So those of you that just want a simple tank, that's fine. But I want the actual sports looking bathing suit cover up, racer back. So I'm going all the way in, not past, this is the center back, not past the center back. And then back out. And I'm going to cut this just uh, about an inch lower than we had the other. So that's pretty extreme because I was trying to show you that. So I'm going to even this out a little bit. So you see I've cut, now I've cut about two inches below where that sleeve was. So there's the back. Now I need to trim that front. Now I'm not cutting that one back, I'm just cutting it straight down. And then there's our underarm seam. So here's our racer back, there's our front. Now there's a couple things 
that are very important here if you even think you're going to sew this together right. Lay your shoulder flat. Now, do you think you're going to get binding around that? Yeah, probably not. So we'll cut this. And let's lay this flat and make sure that this is a nice curve, which it's not. This is the back. And then this is the underarm. This needs to be a nice curve. It cannot be a sharp V. And if you missed the last t-shirt remake I did uh, last week, go back and watch it. I gave a lot of tips for that. So here's the front side. I just want to even this out just a little bit. All right. So there's my one side. Let's go to the dress form so I can show you what this looks like. And then I can take your questions too. All right. <laughs> Sandra, you're switching to your TV? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm way down here, but that's the only way you could see the dress form. This is the top that we made, I match. I didn't even plan that. This is the top that we made a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week. Now let's see what this one looks like. I think it's gonna be pretty cute though. And it's white, so you know what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna end up hand dyeing this. Probably a fabulous yellow color to match the binding. You'll have to stay tuned for that. That wouldn't be a brother show because it's hand dyeing. But if I had some awesome embroidery to it as well, then, then it qualifies. All right, so let's get this crooked lady. Come on, Shirley. <laughs> She's definitely lopsided. Let me fix this. Okay. This is the before. This is the after. So if you notice... The reason I said don't cut in too far is once I add the binding, I want this to fit nicely. I don't want this to be cut way over here. That'd be a whole different version of a top. The sides, I have cut down further because I'm gonna wear a sports bra or a bathing suit, right? And then the back, there's your racer back. So now I need to do the same thing to the other side. Hey, Zena, welcome. Hope it's not too hot down there in Florida. All right, let's go back to the table and I'll cut the rest of this. How am I gonna match this up? Well, there's a few different ways you could do it. I just walked away with my pins. Let me go get my pins back. Now, if you're gonna use pins on a knit, make sure you're using glass head pins or use clips because you don't wanna end up with holes everywhere. And this shirt, is a rayon, so it's very fragile. So the first thing I'm doing is matching up my shoulder seams. It's an easy way to match both of your sides if you didn't cut them at the same time. A lot of times if I'm making a top or I'm designing, I'll do one side first and then you have to match up the other side so it matches. And this is how I do it. All right, here's the center front neckline, I'm just pinning both sides together. So this is the center front right here. This is your neckline. It's easier to pin the neckline together because then you can slowly kind of wiggle the fabric over to find out where you need to cut the other side. This is the center back. Now this does not matter if you cut with the right sides facing out or the right sides facing in, totally doesn't matter. All right, so here, if I lay this nice and flat, can you see this is my first cut edge? I know white's a little bit hard to see. You could use scissors or a rotary cutter, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go in little sections, so I'll use the rotary cutter. All right, there's that. I'll slide this up a little bit. And the larger the shirt you're cutting, the easier this is. Make sure everything's laying nice and flat. There's my side seams matched up. Cut this around. 
and kind of maneuver this over to the front side. Okay, this is flat. And lastly, we just have the top shoulder area, which you can see here is the neckline. There's the shoulder. This is the last part I have to cut. I hope you thought that was pretty easy, pretty simple to make sure that both sides are the same. At least 99% chance of having them the same. All right, so now, while I have these pieced together, I need, this is gonna be my arm's eye. Obviously that's times two. And so I will need a strip of fabric at least that long. I usually take away one inch, but we'll get into that in a second. So let me just see if I have, with that one piece I cut, if I have enough, if I cut that in half. I have plenty. All right, so this was the one long piece that I cut. I'm just going to, this was the fold. So now I have about 30 inches of fabric and 30 inches of fabric. Now the big kicker here is if you can't tell which side is the right side of your fabric, Give yourself a little chalk mark. Now, yellow on yellow is a little hard to see, but I can definitely tell that that's it. All right. So this will be my binding. So if this is the measurement that I'm trying to fill, take your binding, folding this in half, because I won't need this whole piece here. So there's the shoulder. I actually will pin this in place first. Because depending on your knit, usually the binding will be on your armhole. is usually one inch smaller, but because this is a huge armhole, because of the way I cut this, I might need to take it in even a little bit more. So here's the shoulder. And let me just make sure that's nice and straight. Take your binding, fold it in half. If you have your iron ready, go ahead and press it. Use the tailor's clapper so you have a nice crease. I'm just pinning this so it will stay while I attach it to the armholes. What are you sewing today, by the way? Anything exciting? I'm thinking with the heat index all the way across our country. Now, I know a lot of you are not in the USA, but it's pretty darn hot. <laughs> it looks like a really good sewing week. So there's my shoulder. I'm pinning the binding. So I have this folded with right sides facing out. And this is a pretty big binding, but I thought it would look kind of cool. So this is two and a half inches. The whole thing was two and a half inches. A lot of times my binding will just be two inches, which by the time you give yourself a half inch seam allowance, you'll have a half inch sticking out. So this one's a little bit bigger. If I don't like it, after I stitch the first round, I can just stitch a little bit more and it makes it smaller. All right, let's go around the front edge first. So for those of you that watch me when I sew knits, I've given a ton of tips in my classes. You don't stretch the binding in the shoulder area. All you'll end up with is a bunch of puckers right here, and that's not very attractive. So I'm basically putting the binding through the shoulder area where the binding is one-to-one -one with the fabric on the top. As I get a little lower in the top, I might stretch a little bit, but the main stretch is through this bottom curve area because you wanna keep, you don't want, if you actually have the binding less and you stretch this out, that will be bad. And you want to stretch this just a little bit in that curve just to hold it in place. It will hold that curve in place against your body and not stretch out. All right, and as I get to the bottom, right here, I'm gonna put a snip right here because that's going to be where I attach the binding as I pin around the other side. So for now, I will just pin this in place and those, that will be my snip. I'll cut off the excess on this side. 
Hopefully I didn't cut off too much. I did, the back has way more to give, but if I did, it would only happen during the live show because that's usually when all the crazy stuff happens. All right, going down the back side, pin. Speaking of Artspira, have you hooked up Artspira to your machine yet? And if you have, I'm just curious to know what you've embroidered. The one I want to embroider on here that, uh, unfortunately, I was messing with my machines earlier, so um, I can't, but I'll show you the design. It was these little butterflies, which would look perfect on here. So you have to stay tuned for that episode. All right, and then at the bottom, there's my seam. I'll give myself a little snip. So in case you haven't followed, I've pinned all the way around, and this is my underarm seam. Some people like to have the binding meet at the shoulders. That's fine, too. I just find when I'm adding it, though, like this, it's a little less noticeable if you do the underarm. So there's my snips. Pin those. And let's do this one here. I'm just matching up my snips. We'll run that through the serger. So that's one side completed. Do you have any questions on that so far? Well, let's go ahead and do the other side. Again, I've got my right sides facing out. I'll start with the non-dirty side. <laughs> In fact, this time I'll do it a little bit different. I'll put a snip right here. See that snip? And that will be my underarm. So just another way to do it. And I'll pin that in place at the underarm seam. Okay, give it a little stretch right here. This is your underarm, so you do need to stretch just a little bit right through that bottom area. Little stretch. And then the rest is just one-to-one -one or just barely stretching. That looks really messy. But the good news is the binding can clear it up. Let me make sure that that's nice and straight. Because if your seam looks like this when you add the binding, it's gonna look like that on your body, and I don't think we want that. Could be a different look, maybe uh, a ruffle, <laughs> an unintended ruffle, is that what you'd call that? So for those of you that do like to wear a little bathing suit cover up or you go to the gym, uh, some of the tops they have nowadays that you purchase are, they're all short, like really short tank, tank, tanks, uh, crop tops, I guess you'd say. And I don't mind wearing a crop for the sports bra going to the gym, but I want to wear something else over it. And this is where this comes in handy. So you could use a t-shirt you already have on hand. You could, sometimes like these I found on the clearance rack. And I love finding t-shirts on a clearance rack because I can chop them up and make them look totally different. All right, we're getting to the underarm. And then the next step will be surging. So if you have your airflow serger ready, that's what we're going to be using. But you can use any brother serger. You could use your sewing machine. If you decide to use your sewing machine, uh, you'll need to use either a zigzag stitch or even the triple stitch would work because this could stretch a little bit. So here's my underarm seam. Give this a little pull here, Get a little snip, so you know where that, these snips just help because then you'll know exactly where these meet up. And then cut off the excess seam allowance. About a half inch is fine. It really doesn't matter because you're using your snips to match. So now with right sides together, there's my snip for the binding. And here's the other side of the snip. All right, so we have both sides pinned in place, the front and the back. This is gonna be really cute. I could see a huge butterfly right here. Well, not too huge, there isn't a lot of room, but all right, let me see if you have any questions and then we'll go to the surgery.
All right. Any questions while I'm headed over to the serger? Shirley's sitting here waiting to put the top on. <laughs> She's going to just have to wait a few more minutes. All right, Darlene, what did you say? Does Art Spiro work with that? You know what? I'm not, I cannot remember the numbers of all the machines, but if your machine has Wi Fi, then it will. Oh, Deborah, that's a good idea. Mm hmm. Oh, you're welcome, Lois. Yeah, you know, because these turn out so cute. And, you know, the style right now, I mean, it'll change by next year, I'm sure, but right now it's the crop tops. And I'm not wearing a crop top at this point, <laughs> but I still want to go to the gym. I still wear a bathing suit, but wearing something like this is going to be so cute. So not only if you want the top to be a little looser, so the crop top or sports bra is tight underneath, and then you wear this over the top of it, this is usually a little looser. So I think I bought, I hope I bought, yeah, I bought a size larger than what I wear. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hope I did. I mean, if you didn't, that's okay. But if you have a larger t-shirt, like if I go in Wynn's closet and take some of his fishing shirts, <laughs> this would be really cute for that. He probably wouldn't even notice because we have so many. I'll pick one from like years ago. Maybe, uh, you know when you've had white t-shirts for a long time? They were cotton. They're, I mean, we're talking like 20 years. And they get that yellow mark here. I don't, it's, I don't even think it's from your skin. I just think it's just the fabric. I could chop those up and make them very cute be, and get rid of the yellow part on the neckline. Huh, we could have a whole new ad. All right, any other questions before I go to the serger? I have the serger set up, I think, for a four thread. It doesn't matter if you use a four thread or a three thread. Uh, hey, yes, it does. There you go. Anne is answering your question for you. I love the brother fans, <laughs> particularly the wolf pack. You guys help each other so much. Oh, that sounds <laughs> waiting for my rubber swim elastic to redo elastic and swimsuit bottoms. Oh my gosh, Marsha, we could have <laughs> a whole new show on that. Haven't you ever heard my bathing suit story? Okay, I'll tell you at the end. But let's just say my one piece from 1989. That was year I graduated from high school. I still have that suit. And each year it just gets a little taller, a little taller, and a little taller. And I kept sewing the shoulders. But pretty soon I was like this. And then the elastic started wearing out at the bottom. It's it's just, it's kind of a joke around our house. But yeah. <laughs> oh, Lynn's going to make the Linda tunic. Fun, fun. Hey, Tina, I'm with you. Maybe they'll figure out a way to do that. Maybe it'll be a download or something. Oh, Sarah did the earrings. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> hey, Christy. It, that 89, it's a great year. I, I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's why we get along so good, too. All right, so let's go to the serger. And I'm kind of leaning over a camera, so bear with me here. I have this set up for, by the way, if you don't know this machine, this is the new brother airflow serger, which is never is off. I don't think. I wonder how long the light will last because I honestly, this is my absolute favorite serger. Now I have brother's other one from before, and that one is sitting in a corner now. <laughs> Although I have some girls that come and sew with me, so when we're trying to share a serger, that one gets used. All right, let me grab my pins so I don't get pins all over the place. Now I'm going to start surging this at the bottom. First of all, we need to close our binding. If I, so where do you line that snip up with? Well, I usually line it up with the knife because I need a little extra room. I need to have this a little tighter anyways. So if you line up your snips, just line this up basically at the edge of your foot and make sure you do not have pins going through your serger. All right, and there's my snips down here. There's no need to do anything extra with the leftover uh, threads because you're just gonna be putting tucking those in anyways. I'm just cutting them off. Fold this in and there my lower binding is ready. Now, if you have really thick binding, 
Sometimes I will put one seam allowance this way and one seam allowance the other way. Now it will make a little bit of a bulk right underneath here, but hardly at all. So it just really depends on your knit. For now, I'll just keep mine going the same direction. And let's go ahead and start at the underarm. I like to start at the underarm for a couple of reasons. And I'm going to cut off a chunk here. Uh, probably, I'm using about a half inch seam allowance because I made the binding so wide. And I like to start at the underarm, and I'll show you why when we get to the end of it. Again, the difference between a four thread overlock and a three thread is that the four thread is a little bit stronger than the three thread, and it's a little wider. If you look at most of your sportswear, most of it is a four thread overlock. And again, if you're using a sewing machine, I would use either the triple stitch or use um, a zigzag. All right, we're coming around the back side. And I really don't use a lot of pins on anything except for binding and when I'm sewing a set in sleeve. I just don't want to rip this stuff out. So now that I'm at my underarm, the reason I start here is because this is where I want the binding to stretch a little bit. So if I marked, if I judged wrong on the measurement or anything like that, I can stretch just a little and it fits in perfect. You just do not want to stretch at the shoulder or anywhere like that. All right, how does it look? Oh, it looks great. Oh, I really like this yellow and white. I'm gonna to have to come up with something for the neckline to make it pop. Although, if I add some yellow butterflies, that might tie in. All right, let's do the other underarm. So you know fall is coming, and if you have any topics that you want covered here on The Brother Show, be sure to leave a note about that in the comments because they always like to hear what you want to see, want to see and we want to have shows that you want to watch. Okay. You know, <laughs> Fashion Sewing Club members that are here, the skirt that we've been making, this would be really cute with that because that had yellow, I think it's over there, it has yellow stitching. I'll show all of you the skirt. It's really cute. It's a sporty skirt, again, to wear to the beach. All right, start here. This is the underarm again. Now, I just started stitching and then came over to this line. So let me just go a little further and give you a little tip on this. Can you see right here, I'll bring it just a little closer. Right here where I just started stitching on. Well, obviously this is way longer than this area. So when I come back around, I will stitch until it's even. I could have also did a little cutout where you cut out the fabric so you start evenly. This is just how I've done it for years. So that's my preference. But if you're a little more particular or you're nervous about making it even, you could always do a cutout and then just lift your presser foot and start inside there. Now, if you're going to add embroidery as well to this top, and even with the binding, it's really a good idea uh, to have washed the shirt and your binding first, in case if you're using a rayon or a cotton. If it's a polyester, that's not so important. It really won't shrink, but a rayon or a cotton can shrink. And you don't want to have this beautiful sewing or serging and beautiful embroidery and then put it in the wash and dryer and then find out you got puckers everywhere because the fabric decided to shrink on you. Yeah. 
And now see at the bottom, see how I had started here and then went right across. So now it's even. That's what I was talking about. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, Jody, I like that idea. Add a wider top band and add decorative stitching on the wide band. I like that idea. Hmm. Oh, you want a fall fleece poncho? All right, Sandra. It's on the list. Oh, that's a good idea, Susie. Just some yellow top stitching. Well, the Luminaire has a gazillion decorative stitches. That would look good. I think I have... Oh, I cleaned. Sorry. <laughs> I cleaned between Tuesday's show and today, so I can't show you the skirt that this would match. I'll bring it next week. <laughs> All right, so let me put this on. Oh, Christy wants Art Spira for five machines. I like that. Uh-oh, Blinky's back, Zena. Was Blinky back? Oh. <laughs> okay, let me go back down here. <laughs> you must give me this machine. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. And then I want to show you still the designs I'm thinking of doing, and I will give you tips for embroidering on this knit. This is super cute. And I also want to talk about placement. Where are you going to put those butterflies? Well, I don't know. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> All of you that we love to embroider, placement is probably the funniest, can be the funniest, faux pas ever. <laughs> faux pas? <laughs> That's your word for the day? Oh my gosh, look at how great this looks. Okay, so I don't have it on straight yet. Let me straighten Shirley out here. This is going to be so cute. So lower. So if I have a strappy bathing suit on, that'll look great. Uh, the sports bras are have like a bunch of straps right here, and then there's a bando right here. It's going to look amazing. I think I actually have a yellow and lime green one. There's the sides. See how nice that looks through here? And then there's the front, just enough to cover up, but it's loose. Now it's tight on my dress form right here, but on your body, it'll be a lot looser. And so again, bathing suit, perfect underneath or sports bra, which mine usually come across about right here, about here, and then go around the side. I mean, I just, what do you think? I love it. All right, let's talk about some embroidery. <laughs> hey, Lisa, why do I know that you're going to have this sewn and embroidered in like five minutes? You make more clothes than anybody. I love them too. <laughs> okay, so let's go over to the Art Sphere. I'm going to show you the design I would like to transfer over, but I can't right now because I'm working on something else. And then we'll go to the Luminaire and let's check out. I like your idea about doing some decorative stitches, that yellow here to tie this in. That's a great idea. Do we have enough time? Oh, sure, we got 10 minutes. Okay, let me take you over here. And first, bring you in a little closer. And I also want to give you some tips for embroidering on this. So this was the design I'm really, so I might wait and uh, get my machine working. Let me go back into Art Spirit here. Okay. Oh, I know. Isn't that cute? I just found that photo of Wynn and I. I don't even know when that was, but it's adorable. Well, if I don't say so myself. All right, so. Let me just go in here and find Art Spira. I have enough notifications on my phone to, okay, Art Spira. Here you go. And I know you're gonna love this design I found. Okay, so it was in embroidery. Let me see, was it here? Embroidery. Nope. Hold on. 
Maybe it did an update on here. I know it's upside down on you for a second. Don't worry. Here's the magazine. Uh, oh, here. Under popular embroidery. Check this out. I'll bring you even a little closer. There it is. So scroll down to popular embroidery. Look at how cute this is. So if I send it to the machine, which it won't send right now, but you can change the colors. So I was thinking, uh, adding some yellow. I love the green to go on top of here. So if this is the top we're thinking of, add a little more yellow, like a lighter yellow. Put this as a, the same yellow as this color here. And I like the green and the blue. And then maybe where the black is, I'll add maybe a brighter yellow. I'll play with this a little bit. And I'll post photos on Instagram so you guys can see this. So you'll just have to stay tuned for later today. I'll do that. Um, I could add it to my blog too. That way you can't miss it. I did add the t-shirt to my blog. If you go to AngelaWolf.com, the last one we did. So you can watch the replay and I'll do it for this one as well. So on here, all you have to do, it tells you the design. Click create. There's the design. Super cute. What hoop size are you using? Pick your hoop size. You only need a four by four for this. I have a five by seven here ready to go. And that's how tiny it is. So once I add this to the machine, I'm going to be multiplying that all over the place. So I'll click done. Uh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to call this, let's see, butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> so when it gets to the machine later, so I'm just showing you the whole process. So anybody who has this can do it. Is my machine? Yeah, my machine is not connected. So you would just click transfer. But mine is not working because I don't have it hooked up. So anyways, you would click transfer and it will go right to your machine. So that was not an Artspira issue. That was my issue because I was using this on something different. So now let's go to Luminaire and just see if by any chance there is anything else in there and what decorative stitch you probably would choose. All right, I'm gonna take you back over to Blinky for a moment. Maybe she'll behave. Oh, the black to orange. That's a good idea. Oh, butterflies around the bottom would be cute. I'll show you where I'm going to put them. Oh, thanks, Mandy. Oh, thanks, Lisa. All right, so I'll show you where I'm going to put the butterflies just to give you an idea because I like kind of an asymmetrical look. All right, let me go under here, under embroidery. Let's see if we've got any little guys in here. And I don't know what brother machine you have, but if you went through, I'll bet you can't even embroider everything on your machine. There's so many different designs. Oh, that'd be cool. In the back, out of like all yellow. Oh, I got roses. Oh, I love roses. That would be cute. What else do we have? So because it's a knit, just to give you a few tips here, you don't want anything that's too intricate. So there's a butterfly. Let's see if we can change this up a little bit. Okay, we'll just pretend this is the one coming from Art Spira so I can give you some tips. Now your machine might be different, but you don't have to sew every single color in there either. So what I'm thinking is, uh, what machine am I on? The Luminaire. The Brother Luminaire. Okay, I there's so many different colors here. I'm not sure which one I'd want to change. So if you have Color Shuffle, go there. Click on Random. Oh, looks like I've been having a heyday on this one. Get rid of all these. And I want yellow, a bright yellow. That kind of looks like the shirt, right? I want a light yellow. Uh, what other colors? Oh, I love green. Maybe like a, a tealy blue and a, like a lime green. Nah, how about a lighter green? No, nah, I think it'll be better, a little richer. Any other colors you want in there? Should I add pink since it's my favorite color? 
All right, here you go. Click OK. And check out all the options. So I, I think I can do this with the one I'm transferring over from Artspira. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Now, if this design is too dense, what I can do is embroider it on chiffon or not chiffon, but on tulle and then attach it that way. Do you have any favorites? Oh, that would look great on jeans, by the way. I think I like, I like some of these with a lot more yellow, like maybe this one that has yellow on the outside. Oh yeah. What do you think? Click set. There it is. Now I can add more designs, which I'm going to do. Uh, let me just look at one more thing here. On edit. I have a no sew feature, which I could take a couple of these out. So let's just say I don't want the pink. See how it lightens it up a little bit? And I know some of you have this machine and you don't use that feature. That looks wonderful. So if I want to take out some of these other designs on here or these other colors, just click no sew. Oh, no, I need that color. We definitely need. What about blue? Oh, we definitely need that. So if you look up to the top right, it will actually show you what you're clicking on. There's the green. Do we need those? Yeah. In fact, I think we need them all. What does it look like without that? Oh, very boring. So I could leave the pink out or add it in. What do you want? Pink in or pink out? Okay, so... While we're here, let's talk about placement, and then I'll show you how to add a few more designs. Now, I don't have a bobbin thread. Well, actually, look at how ironic. I have yellow thread if we decide to do decorative stitching. So I'll pop that in, and then I just want to show you on the shirt where I would put some of this embroidery. Pink out, pink in. <laughs> I see how Jody's pink out, Darlene's pink in. <laughs> Let me know. Do you want the pink or you don't want the pink? Okay, so first of all, where on here would I put embroidery? Well, in the back here, in the center back, something here would be really cool. Another place that I might do it, I like asymmetrical. So I love the idea you guys had of doing some yellow stitching through here to kind of tie in the shirt. But what about adding a butterfly, say, up here? This is in the top right. Maybe up on the neckline here. Maybe up on the shoulder. Maybe doing just one side and then one over here. You want to avoid this area. That would be really awkward for some butterflies. Well, I guess it just depends where you're going with your designs. But I think I would like a couple butterflies here and then a couple down here. So three down here and three up here. And then I'll leave this side blank. Okay, so let's go ahead and hoop this so I can give you some tips. Now, I'm not gonna use wash away stabilizer because I don't want it to wash away. I'll use tear away, sticky back tear away. I don't know about you, but I hate wasting stabilizer. So I try to conserve as much as I can. So you just want your stabilizer to embroidery stabilizer cut about an inch wider than your hoop on all the sides. And if you're new to embroidery, this is sticky back tear away. So there's paper side up and then a softer paper below. Let me just show you what this looks like. without messing up my nails. There you go. So this side here is just, it just feels like paper. Here's the sticky, and then there's the underneath side. So you'll open your hoop a little bit here. If you're only adding one of those little guys, use a four by four hoop. You don't need anything this big. I just happen to have this sitting around. And since I'm gonna do three, why not just get them all done at the same time? Push your hoop down, you need a little pressure there. 
Go ahead and tighten your screw back up. I was thinking, wow, we made a uh, pretty good time. And I forgot we started though, like nine minutes late. Good thing it was nine minutes. If you're 10 minutes late, Facebook knocks your live show off. So good thing that technology decided to work. All right, now I'm just peeling back that paper. And let's see, which side do I, I think I'll go with this side. So take your top and just layer, let's see. I have to be pretty strategic on this. All right, I want butterflies up through here. So here's my neckline. There's my shoulder. And I don't want any down here, so let's slide this down a little bit. And the top is not gonna be stretched right through here, so don't stretch it as you put it on stabilizer. All right, so I'm thinking maybe one here, maybe one up here if there's room. Mm, I'm changing it. Here you go. All right. Maybe one here, maybe one here, maybe one up here. Let's see what we have. We'll go to the embroidery machine. Now, those of you that have the Luminaire are going to be very excited because you always ask for tutorials. So you'll get a little tutorial on how to use all of your functions. So, or not all, but some. Right now, I have my standard J-foot on, which I won't be embroidering with that. But I want you to look at this and go, oh, my, here we go. <laughs> okay, on here. Go ahead and click Embroidery. And click, oh, I'll put my, here you go. Get this on, there we go. And go ahead and click on this icon right here. Let's see how big this is, oh. Wowzer, that's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but if I slide this down a little bit, let's see if we can change the size on this real quick. I think the one on the Art Sphere app is going to be the perfect one, but let's just go back, return, and let's go to size. Now on size, see this icon right here? This also changes the density. And now let's see if we can make it smaller. Oh, hey, that's pretty small. Click OK, embroider, and we'll click on the projector one more time. Oh, yeah, that's much better. So I can move the butterfly around. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Uh, the rainbow does not come with the machine. <laughs> it's just a bonus. Oh, yeah, look, this is looking really cute. So I think if I add a combination of this one here, and then maybe, maybe I only need one. I want to be careful, though. I don't want the edges of these flowers to be right on the edge of the binding. That's a lot of fabric to embroider through. So let's bring it down a little bit more. And then if I want to add a few more, what I can do is just embroider them onto tool and then maybe add them up there. But I think this is going to be fun. The yellow, one butterfly. Okay, so we're re re redoing that. One butterfly up here. Maybe I'll do two at the bottom and one in the center back. All right, what do you think? Uh, now i got to come and see if you want the pink. Add, keep the pink in or keep the pink out but I think that's gonna look really good. All right.
What are your thoughts? Pink in, pink out. Keep the pink, Victoria says. I know, Delia. That's the problem is when you start sewing on these, you can keep changing it. Yeah, I like the idea of one shoulder too. So, Julie, I think what I'm going to do is I'll put one butterfly up here. And I'll get that art spear of butterfly over here. So they're two different butterflies. And then depending how it looks, I might add a couple at the hip or I might not. It depends. I think one in the back, though, would look really nice. Pink in. <laughs> Everybody's, we got mostly pink in. All right, pink staying in. All right, are you going to try this? I'm really curious to hear if you're going to try it. So in the meantime, I'll put Shirley's shirt back on from last week in case you missed this episode this was a really 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 easy way to take a t-shirt and turn it into another bathing suit cover-up now i just need time to get to the beach <laughs> the weather's perfect for the beach so yeah I'll, I'll let you know i will put photos i will put photos on instagram and I will also take this video, put it on the blog. Now, by the way, speaking of the blog, do you know how to get to Brothers Blog? I'll make sure I have it up here. Uh, first of all, share your photos using hashtag Brothers so They love to see what you're working on. And a lot of times they'll share it too. If you're using the art spirit on this, I would love to see it as well. All right, here's the website. Brothersos.com. If you scroll to the bottom, you will see the Brother Blog. There's two of them. There's a sewing blog and a crafting. So if you have the Brothers Scan and Cut, you definitely don't want to miss that as well. You can always go back. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And if you're on Facebook, follow and subscribe as well. The easiest way to watch this over again is to share it to your Facebook. All right, guys, any other comments or questions? Otherwise, I'll let you go. Next week, we've got a full week as well. Yeah, back. Okay, Victoria, I'll do the back. <laughs> Pink, bottom, and back. All right, Marianne, I got it. <laughs> All right, next week on Tuesday, Jane's coming on with some napkins and placemats, I believe. I have my live show on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, Joanne Banco will be here with the free design of the month. Oh, wait, it's not July 31st yet. So don't forget to go to the Brother blog and get July's free design of the month if you missed it. You only have a few more days on that. And that will be next week's show. So again, have a great day. Great day. I know, super fun tops. Thank you, thank you. Have a great day. Happy sewing. Stay cool, and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.